There's an annoying crybaby, a sketchy cereal advertisement, and a serious case of animal neglect? Hello, Popcorn Recap here. Today, we'll cover a 1983 horror thriller movie called Cujo. Before we start, be sure to like the video, drop a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you dig the summary. The movie starts with a dog named Cujo chasing a rabbit. He didn't have breakfast yet, so he figured rabbit stew would be great for a cold morning. Since he has no bushcraft training, Cujo fails to catch the rabbit and gets a nasty bite from an angsty bat. At the Trenton residence later that night, Tad braces himself for bed. Like any other kid in the country, Tad is scared of the monster hiding in his closet. I remember finding a monster in my closet when I was young. I hit it with a bat. It was my dad, trying out some questionable clothes for my stepmom. Boy, was I grounded hard that month. Anyway, back to the story. Tad screams after getting too scared and wakes his parents, Vic and Donna. They comfort him and prove that there are no monsters in the closet. None of that works, as Tad spends the entire night barricading the closet doors with whatever furniture he can find. In the morning, Steve, a good friend of the family, brings Tad his horse. For some reason, Donna acts awkwardly towards him. Before leaving, he tells Vic that he's ready for a tennis rematch anytime. The two have their rematch later, and Vic dismantles Steve. But he doesn't seem to mind. He even says he likes getting his bum whooped because he's a masochist. Vic was like, whatever turns you on, little did he know that it was his wife. As it turns out, Donna is having an affair with Steve while her husband is busy at work. That was the reason why she was acting so sus earlier. By the looks of things, Vic and Donna are starting to have issues with their marriage. Only Tad is keeping both of them together with his cuteness. The next day, Vic looks for a mechanic for his car. A postman suggests he take it to Joe Camber from outside town. Since the postman gave Joe a good review, Vic decides to trust him. He takes the car to Joe and brings his family along for the ride. While there, Donna and Tad get scared when they see Cujo, who now looks like a teenage girl dumped by her boyfriend on prom night. Joe's son, Brett, tells them Cujo isn't dangerous, so Donna lets Tad pet him for a bit. Later that night, Vic performs a ritual to make all the monsters in Tad's room leave. Maybe he should consider doing that with his wife since there's a monster that loves to pounce on her lately. The next day is a tough one for Vic. You see, he created an ad campaign for a cereal company. Now that company gets involved in a public scandal. It seems the children that eat their cereals suddenly start peeing red, which scares the living daylights out of their parents. Vic starts to panic after thinking about the repercussions of the scandal. Donna calms him down and says he'll be able to figure it out like he always does. Vic then spends the rest of the day doing damage control at his agency. Meanwhile, Donna does some damage control of her own. She goes to Steven and ends their affair. While she's leaving, Steven goes after her and tries to kiss her. During that time, Vic drives by and sees them. However, when he returns for a closer look, they magically disappear. Donna picks up Tad from school, and when she gets home, she acts like nothing is wrong when Vic asks what she's done that day. At this point, Vic is starting to smell Steven on his wife. Meanwhile, Cujo's descent into madness continues as he now starts getting aggressive when he hears loud noises. The same can be said with Joe, as he starts going insane from his demanding wife. Just kidding, but I bet he's close. Anyway, his wife gives him a gift, and in exchange, she wants him to let her visit her relatives in another state. Of course he lets her go because what else can he do? Anyway, Vic goes to Tad's school to pick him up. While the father and son bond on their way home, Stephen visits Donna hoping to get some bonding action too. Since she now wants to be a loyal wife, Donna rejects Stephen's advances. In response, he becomes more aggressive but calms down and leaves after Tad and Vic arrive. The next day, Vic tells Tad he's going away for a business trip. While he gets frustrated at his son's complaining at first, his cuteness gets the better of him. Since he's complaining about the monsters in his bedroom, Vic tells Tad that he'll write and plaster the chant on his wall so his mom can read it for him. Before Vic leaves for his trip, Donna admits her affair with Steven and says she ended it. I don't know what she was expecting, but Vic tells her it's not easy to forget about it. In the end, Vic makes it clear that he's still unsure what to do about her cheating bum. Back at the Cambers, Brett looks for Cujo after realizing he's not at home. After a while of searching, Cujo appears, and he's a aggressive towards Brett. Ungrateful swine. After the boy continuously calls out to him, Cujo gives him the cold shoulder and disappears in the thick fog. When he returns home, Brett tells his mom about what happened to Cujo. While the boy wanted to tell his dad, his mother stopped him. It seems she doesn't want their trip postponed because of some crazed or demon-possessed dog. Speaking of Cujo, he visits the house of Joe's friend. He recalls that this guy loves talking smack about his chubby dog bod. So, Cujo decides to prove him wrong and serve some good old payback. Cujo rips the guy's throat out and drinks his blood. 
Sometime later, Joe tries calling for Cujo, but he doesn't answer. He goes to see his friend and notices that his door got destroyed. Concerned, he goes inside and collapses after seeing the sorry state of his friend. After regaining composure, Joe tries to call the cops. Then, the rabid Cujo appears and starts aggressively barking at Joe. He tries to get away from the dog but fails. He probably gets his throat ripped too. While that happens, Donna and Tad are happily on their way to see Joe. She wants him to fix her car, which sounds like Bumblebee having an upset stomach. When they arrive at his house, Donna quickly learns no one is home. Tad then complains that his seatbelt is stuck, so Donna tries to fix it. All of a sudden, Cujo appears and starts attacking them. Fortunately, Donna manages to close the windows and their doors. Cujo gets even more aggressive as he hears Tad's annoying cries and Donna's constant honking. Eventually, Cujo gets tired and leaves the mother and child be. He knows they're stuck in that car like a stepsis in a washing machine. While Tad entertains himself by doodling in the back seat, Donna prays for a miracle to happen and it does. After hours of staring at the steering wheel, the car finally turns on. Happy and somewhat cocky that they're about to leave for safety, Donna trash talks Cujo. Fuck you, dog. The universe responds by shutting down the car again. You should have kept your mouth shut, woman. Cujo doesn't even bother with them after that. He takes a break and enjoys the beautiful sunset above his prey. Later that night, Vic calls at home but nobody answers. Since he's still on a business trip, he gives up calling for now. He returns to enjoy his fancy dinner while his wife and child slowly become Cujos. After a long day cooped inside the car, Tad's bladder finally gives in. Donna opens the door slightly so that Tad can take a leak. Suddenly, the phone inside Joe's house rings and the noise drives Cujo mad. He destroys the house's windows when trying to take out the phone. Realizing they aren't going anywhere, the mother and child settle to sleep inside the car that night. In the morning, Donna wakes to Cujo's fresh morning face. Vic also tries calling back home that morning, but still, nobody answers. Later that day, the heat inside the car starts taking its toll on Donna and Tad. While looking around, Donna sees a baseball bat lying on the ground. Then, Tad asks her why she doesn't give starting the car another try. Donna says she's scared the battery might run out because it's already weak. Tad tells her it doesn't matter because they're both just sitting there and she should try it. She does, but nothing happens. So she immediately gives up and decides to wait for another miracle. Well, that miracle is about to happen as the postman prepares to bring Joe some mail. Just kidding, he gets stopped by his co-worker because of a hold notice for any mail going to Joe's house. Since Joe hasn't notified them that he's returned, they assume he's still on vacation with his family. Unable to bear waiting for his meal on such a hot day, Cujo starts ramming the car violently. Inside, Donna tries her best to shut Tad's loud mouth so Cujo can calm down. Eventually, Cujo gets tired and lets the mother and child rest again. After several failed attempts to get in touch with his family back home, Vic starts getting worried. He can no longer concentrate on his work and no one can blame him. In his mind, Stephen must be having a blast with his wife right now. Sadly, he doesn't know that his family is in desperate need of salvation. Back at the car, Donna looks around and sees that Cujo isn't around. She quietly gets out of the car but doesn't get anywhere far. Cujo comes from behind <laughs> yeah, boy. and goes for Donna's neck. She gives everything she has to defend herself against the rabid dog while her child screams like a sissy boy inside the car. After a brief struggle, Donna manages to push Cujo outside. She then passes out because of pain and exhaustion. Vic wakes up late at night later from a nightmare. He immediately calls his family, but no one answers. So, he decides to pack up and leave for home. His colleague tries to stop him, but it doesn't work because he already made up his mind. It's about damn time, you fool! In the morning, Donna panics after waking up to Tad having a seizure. She tries to get him out of the car, but Cujo is waiting to attack them. Fortunately, Tad recovers and manages to breathe again. While that happens, Stephen visits the Trenton's home and decides to trash it. When Vic arrives, he sees the mess and immediately calls the police. He assumes that Stephen did it and took his wife and child too. To cover all angles, the detective sends a police officer to Joe's house because Vic mentioned his wife went there to have their car fixed. Of course, when the police officer arrives at Joe's place later, he somehow misses checking the blood-covered vehicle staring him in the face. Instead, he goes to the barn where Cujo is ready and waiting for him. Sure enough, the rabid dog makes short work of him. Donna also tries to get out but quickly changes her mind after Cujo turns his attention to her. When the officer doesn't return or report later, Vic becomes suspicious and decides to look into it himself. While he's on his way, Donna goes all in after Tad stops breathing. She goes for the baseball bat and fights Cujo. With sheer luck and plot armor, she manages to stab the rabid dog to death with the broken bat. She then carries Tad inside the house, lets him drink some dirty water, and performs CPR. Despite doing it the wrong way, Donna manages to revive her son. Before she can continue celebrating, Cujo jumps at the window 
window for round two. Donna grabs the police officer's revolver and buries cold lead in Cujo's head. Not long after that, Vic arrives and sees a wounded Donna carrying Tad outside the house. The movie ends after he rushes to help his wife and child. If you guys haven't realized it yet, it's a simple case of rabies. Yep, there's no demon from hell or anything like that. Nevertheless, it doesn't mean it's less scary. In fact, you should be even more scared because all of this can happen in real life. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.